Okay, so I'm gonna start. Um, my name is Andy. I work as an open source security in um, in space industry in Europe. Uh, how many of you know, or how many of you um, work in space industry? How many of you? Okay, that's some hands up. How many of you know uh, what the SLE is? Okay, that, that's like three people. Excellent. So, um, hacking satellites is not a new thing, obviously. Um, however, most of the discussion uh, revolve around the space segment and the means of directly hacking the or accessing the, the satellite. However, um, I would argue that um, it is the ground segment that is more um, more likely to be targeted by the adversaries, and that's because of uh, its um, that's that's mainly because of the large uh, attack surface that it presents. So, uh, in this presentation, I'll briefly compare the uh, space segment with the ground segment, uh, as in the in terms of uh, attack surface. I will introduce you to the SLE protocol and some security uh, aspects of it. And I, then I will proceed to demonstrate how you can um, exploit um, some exploitation methods of the protocol and some mitigations uh, against them. So just very briefly, um, space, every space mission can be divided um, like loosely into a space segment and the ground segment. And the ground segment, of course, also include the user segment for simplicity. Um, in general, the space segment usually is much more complex than the ground segment. However, if you think about it, it is just like one node in the whole system. So uh, the satellite is a very complete uh, node. However, there is only one interface, one, one entry point interface. And because of that, it has a very small attack surface. And the ground segment, on the other hand, uh, has less complex elements to it, but there are many uh, available, and because of that, uh, it imposes much larger attack surface. Um, on top of that, communica communicating directly with spacecraft is, uh, is quite challenging, uh, and not because of the technical aspect of it, but because of the um, environmental aspects, like visibility, orbit, and also the distance uh, from Earth. And um, on the other hand, the ground segment, um, it, it uses main or it uses standard infrastructure, which means that um, all, most of their most of its components are also are, are also vulnerable to, um, to the to the vulnerabilities that are present in any other infrastructure or software that we are using on a daily basis. And because most of the applications that are used in space industry on the ground segment they are uh, custom development, uh, I would say that there is a uh, that, that creates some additional avenues to uh, find uh, new vulnerabilities in it. And then again, and then again uh, to, uh, to try to hack the ground segment uh, components, there is no sophisticated uh, equipment required. So this is at extremely high level, um, like representation of a space mission where we divide space segment and um, separated from the ground segment. Obviously, on the space segment, we have like uh, you have a space asset, which is, this might be a spacecraft, and then you have a ground station that communicates with the spacecraft. You have a mission control that um, uses ground station to communicate with the spacecraft, and then you have a, you have users that use the mission control uh, applications, and they um, either work internally on uh, dedicated workstations or they connect remotely. Uh, through a VPN or jump host or whatever you might have. Now, my argument is that it's gonna be much easier to hack uh, this thing that you see on the screen than actually build it in order to communicate with uh, with many satellites, which you would like to which you which you would like to hack. So, what is SLE? Um, SLE is a protocol uh, developed or um, created by CCSDS. Uh, certification uh, standardization body is a standard. It is used to send uh, telecommands and receive uh, telemetry from uh, spacecraft. It is based on TCP IP. Uh, it supports transport layer and uh, encoding and uh, authentication. 
And it can have two roles. One is the SLE provider, which is in our case is like a ground station. And then you have SLE user, which, uh, which is like a mission control system. Now, so in a nutshell, uh, it defines a, a protocol to transfer the PDUs uh, using the TCP uh, for transfer, for data transfer and ASL1 for data encoding. And in the system, uh, there are two, uh, two places. Well, okay, there could be many places, but in principle, there are at least two places where the SLE is used. It is in the communication between the MCS, which is mission control system, and the ground station, and also between the ground station uh, and, the, and, the sat and, the, and the space asset, right? So, be but because we are, hacking the, uh, we are hacking the ground segment, we are focusing only on the link that is highlighted on the slide. So here is uh, this slide. Here you can see all the organizations and most of the companies that use, or the most famous companies that use the SLE to some extent. Uh, if you look on the standard uh, itself, at the documentation, here is a list of all agencies that are responsible for development of the standard. So there are quite a few, uh, quite a few of them, and there are at least three times more different organizations, public and private companies using um, the standard for space operations. Also, um, some of the ground segment uh, specific specialized equipment comes with uh, support to, the, to SLE. If you look at the, for instance, Safran uh, Cortex devices, they all support SLE. And also here, NASA Space, uh, uh, Near Space Network, uh, they proudly um, share that they are also supporting SLE uh, protocols in on the list of their interfaces and capabilities. So, um, for the purpose of this research, research we focus uh, only on the commanding capabilities. So, it is called FCLTU, which is Forward, link, uh, forward Communication Link Transport uh, Unit, Transmission Unit. And it is basically the thing that you are sending to spacecraft. It combines it, or, or the service that you are using to send uh, telecommands to spacecraft. Um, it defines a number of, uh, uh, quite a decent list of different uh, types of operations, but for this research we are focusing only on the bind, unbind to establish and uh, connection and disconnect, and then start and stop to set up uh, certain properties on the ground station equipment, and then we also uh, look at the transfer data operation which is used to send the actual telecommands to spacecraft. Now. Uh, as per documentation, there is no data privacy that comes with the SLE as a protocol or and also standard. Um, it comes with a sequence uh, numbering and this is supposed to be helped in uh, preventing uh, injection and potentially seizing control of spacecraft, but uh, that doesn't really work. There, are, there is an easy way to, uh, to bypass this restriction. And also there is um, an authentication that is uh, provided out of the box, however, uh, is very susceptible to many middle attacks because of the uh, because of the lack of the encryption. So later I will show you the demos how um, how this actually can work in practice. We have a we have a very very easy very simple uh, test environment um, where we assume that uh, so this is um, um, assumed breach testing. We assume that the adversaries are in the uh, in the network already, and we have a SLE provider that plays a role uh, as a ground station, and uh, which is like a simple uh, Debian VM, and with uh, European Space Agency SLE API implementation installed on it. SLE user is another VM which plays a role as a mission control system. Uh, it's also Debian, and the SLE implementation used there is the simple Python SLE, uh, which is uh, which is like a, a, a PIB pa a package you can download it. And this is just demonstrate that it doesn't really matter what is the implementation of the SLE, um, as long as you are using any SLE or any implementation that follows the standard, your uh, operations are gonna be vulnerable to uh, to those attacks, which I'm gonna demonstrate. So the because there is no encryption, we thought that the best um, the best idea will be to wrap our uh, attack scenarios within the many the middle attack uh, technique. So at the high level, we do the ARP spoofing. We capture the data at the TCP frame level. Uh, we decode them using the ISP1. Uh, we, we decode the ISP1 frames. I will explain what it is in a second. 
Uh, and then we manipulate the content uh, of the CLTUs that are going to be sent to spacecraft, and then uh, we update the TCP frame and then push it forward uh, to the receiving part. Um, okay, you, everyone knows how the R spoofing works, so I'm going to skip that part. Uh, we basically grab the packets and put it in the net fil filter queue, and then we process them. So the interesting part is the, the processing part. As I mentioned before, the um, the data is obviously in the TCP frame data field, uh, and these are the SLEP PDUs um, elements, which are in the ISP1 format. Now, ISP1 is based on the ASN1 encoding, and uh, which is basically uh, a simple tagline value uh, data, which is very, very easy to decode. And however, there are a few, uh, apart from the TLV, there are a few uh, custom uh, structures and uh, context-related uh, sequences, which you would have to struggle a little bit to decode, but the standard is pretty well described, so it, did, it didn't take too much time uh, to figure out what they are. So, uh, and as I mentioned before, we in our demo we are focusing only, only, only on the telecommanding part because our goal is to, to uh, start sending something to spacecraft to the ground station. Um, once you decode the, um, the data, using the ASN1 um, encoding, you have to map it to the FCLTU structures. Um, and this is also this, something that is described in the standard, so it's, uh, it's available to everyone. And that's what we used. So this is an example of a, of a bind uh, message or bind operation between the, between the ground station and uh, between the mission control system and the ground station. So we can see that you have an ISP header, then you have a main structure, which is followed by the additional structure. And then somewhere in the middle, we have the credentials. And also some additional, um, additional elements, which uh, you can overwrite or you can, you can play with. Um, again, there is no encryption. So all those, uh, all those bytes are, um, they mean what it says, right? So in terms of demo, um, just to establish the baseline, I will show you how uh, the typical communication between the MCS and the ground station looks like. Um, in this demo, you will see that uh, first we are doing the binding between the two nodes, then we are sending the, the, we are asking the receiving node to start the operations. We are sending some data, then we are stopping it, and then we are uh, unbinding it. I, 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 I unbinding it, and I will try to play, I will try to play the video. Let me know if you can see it. Okay, so on the on the top screen you see the on the bottom part you see the um, SLE provider. On the top you see the SLE um, SLE user. The provider is the ground station, and the user is the mission control system. So we start the SLE provider, and then we run our test. You can see that we have first established the connection. Uh, we send the bind, which was the successful uh, operation, and then we are wait, we are um, we are sending the start operation, and then we are sending the data. We are sending the data to the ground station. So this this uh, this um, string of bytes is what go was gonna get eventually to the spacecraft, like some of those bytes. And then we stop it, and and then we unbind, right? So that's like the nominal situation. Um, so what happens then? So one of the things, the first things which is which we can do is to cost a little bit of denial of service by preventing the users from authenticating uh, to the ground station. And the reason why it's, 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 it's an annoying way of, of, of doing this for the user is because the SLE provider, when, when the user fails, fails authentication, the SLE provider simply drops the connection. There is, no, and there, there is no feedback whatsoever. So the users don't know what is the reason of failing the connection. It's only the ground station that knows. So in this case, we uh, we basically do the same. We we try to grab the bind operate the, the bind operation, which has a very well defined uh, structure. So when you 
monitoring what's happening on the wire, you can easily find patterns and then you can simply mangle the bytes which are responsible for the authentication. So what's gonna happen? So what's gonna happen is the following. Um, on the right hand side you have our exploit. And then on the right on the right hand side you have at the bottom you again have SLE provider and on the top is the is our um is our MCS mission control system that connects to the ground station. So we start the R spoofing and we start observing the communication between the both. And then you can see despite the fact that we have uh, sent the start the bind request we didn't succeed there is an exception on the uh, ESA SLE implementation but there is no no feedback uh, going back to the user so at this point we we cannot really do anything we see the authentication failure So this way you can uh, you can uh, create a denial of service as long as you are in the network. So the next demo. This is also quite similar uh, similar to the previous one, but here we are actually grabbing the credentials because, um, as I mentioned before, we can actually reuse them. Um, so here you will see. Uh, here we will see grabbing the connect the credentials from the bind message uh, and then display them on the screen. It's a similar situation. So we start the SLE provider, we started our exploit, we start the SLE provider, uh, we start the um, our MCS. We captured the credentials, the bind is successful, uh, but we did capture the credentials, so now we can reuse them. Um, the credentials are um, encrypted, but it doesn't matter because um, you will see later that SLE as a protocol is vulnerable to replay attacks. So you can just grab them and then you can use them for your own connection. I'm trying to okay so um as mentioned before we can uh we can let the management operations go as they are and instead we can in a stealth mode uh, try to tamper with the data themselves the ones that are gonna get to the spacecraft so we're gonna um in this case we're not gonna cap we, we're not gonna do anything to the operations we only capture the um the the frames which contain the transfer data pdus um and then we change the content of the of the commands that that are sent uh, that that are being sent to spacecraft so here basically on the at the bottom screen at the bottom side uh, you can see on the left side you can see the sle provider or, or the ground station and then mission control system on the right side and then on top, you can see our exploit, which uh, is searching for a specific um, string of bytes and then replaces it with something else. So, because there is absolutely no verification of what the MCS is actually sending to the ground station, and the ground station simply takes it and forwards it to the to the spacecraft. Um, this can be done in a stealth mode, and it's going to be very difficult unless you are monitoring for our, our, our spoofing. Then uh, it's going to be difficult for for the operators to realize that they are sending something that they have not meant to send.
so this is the string which we uh, this is what the this is what the MCS sent and this is what has been received at the ground station however you can see that in the communication um, everything is uh, everything is verified everything is fine and neither MCS nor ground station complain about it so this way we can send whatever we want to spacecraft And so, uh, I think the most interesting demo is where you can actually take all those um, all those elements together, and you can prepare and exploit in a way that it will take over or let you take over the SLE session. So here we are capturing the the bind and man manipulate the credential structures in order to prevent the authentication. Then we reuse the credentials which we have captured uh, for our own SLE session, and we can keep on using those credentials for as long as it is defined in the authentication delay of the SLE provider um, configuration. And from what I have seen so far, um, it, it is a very long, very long delay because of the, because of the, um, because of the propagation delay and all, um, all the distance, depending on the distance between the, uh, between the earth and the, and the spacecraft. Uh, by default, this value is usually around 600 seconds, so that's that's a lot of time to actually uh, cause a damage and start sending something that is um, is gonna make some trouble on the spacecraft side. So, so here it is. It is a it is a semi-automated uh, exploit because I wanted to show you how you can actually uh, how this works in details. So we are starting the we are starting on the right hand side we are starting the SLE provider on the right hand side on the top we are starting the MCS MCS tries to bind but it fails uh, our exploit code the credentials and then we are gonna copy those credentials and reuse them in another um, in another exploit. As you can see, nothing really happened on the ground station. There is an exception, but that's because it, that implementation doesn't handle it properly. But from the ground segment, from, from the ground station point of view, that's, that's, um, that's a nominal situation because someone tried to authenticate, they failed. So nothing happened on the ground station, we're gonna keep on waiting. And then in the meantime, the adversaries can actually um, bind to the ground station as if they were um, a legitimate mission control system. And then we managed to bind to the ground station. Um, we are starting the typical management operations and then we are sending the data as adversaries um, or as the MCS, but we are adversaries uh, in this case. So, um, that's basically how you take over control of a spacecraft if you have access to the ground station. So in conclusion, uh, it was just one, one of the methods that you can take over the control of spacecraft uh, using SLE uh, protocol. As mentioned before, we focus only on the commanding parts, uh, but there is also telemetry part, uh, which if you, if, you, if you can imagine, there are, there are quite um, nasty things you can do with telemetry and, and how you can mangle the bytes and how you can uh, affect the operations by uh, changing the telemetry that the spacecraft is receiving. So uh, important bit is that all that knowledge which I presented here is, uh, is based on OSINT. All the standards, all the documentations are uh, public, so you can go and have a look. Uh, CCSDS is trying to mitigate those issues uh, providing uh, space data link security. However, this is only between the ground station and the uh, between the ground station and the spacecraft itself. The, the ground segment is still going to be vulnerable, and our argument will be that um, CCSDA, CCSDS PKI concept could be used uh, instead of S SDLS uh, to enable TSL-like uh, features on the ISP level, and therefore all the communication would be encrypted and everything, all the issues which I'm presenting today, they would go away. 
Um, currently, we are discussing with European Space Agency to. Currently, we are discussing Space Agency with. Uh, we want to make some additional tests. And here is the list of all resources. You can have a look. And the publication is going to be available as of today um, on this website. So you can have a look at all the details, how it is, um, what I have just described in this presentation. So thanks. Thank you very much.